Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming at you with another episode of Learn to Play Traveler, the Mongoose Second Edition. Uh, we're using the core rule book, and uh, anytime I turn to a page, I'll have it displayed up here so that you can see. In this episode, we're going to be talking about combat. Uh, we're talking about personal combat, not ship to ship combat, and not uh, vehicle combat. We're just talking about personal combat on the on the either a ship or the ground uh, where you're using you know your rifles and your guns or your melee weapons and you've got your personal armor on like your vac suits or your cloth armor or something like that that's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode all right now all the information that i display here is going to be displayed on the wall right here so that you can follow along uh, let's go ahead and flip to the combat page. All right, now before I begin, um, I want to shed some light. Uh, basically, just put some generalities out there. A lot of, you can play in the theater of the mind. You know, you and your players can play Traveler in the theater of the mind where you talk about uh, what room they're in or where the hallway length is or the uh you know what the alien looks like and things like that i find that to be not as enjoyable as when i use ship deck plans or if i put build a little city and i put it out there where i have a little air raft model or i have painted miniatures that's when i find that i really enjoy the the combat in any game really and so in traveler I, I showed you right here i got a little deck plan laid out and those are one inch squares uh easy to count you know easy to measure they're one inch uh and then you can play with uh, actual pewter uh miniatures 28 millimeter 15 millimeter even there was a period where 15s were really popular in traveler uh, and then there's also like Steve Jackson and some other companies are putting out like cardboard uh, fold up miniatures that you can use on your map and they're 28 millimeters as well. Uh, what I also tend to use is just a simple 12 inch ruler because remember all these squares are one inch but what if they're not on a deck? What if they're in uh, in the wilderness, right? I just use a ruler to measure the ranges and how far they can move and things like that. Where, it, Or you can use like a play mat that has inches counted out on. Now, what's kind of unusual in Traveler, and I'm jumping forward to ships, but they in Traveler, a one inch square is not like five feet, like in some other games, or one meter. It is one and a half meters, which is close to five feet, but everything's measured in meters in Traveler. And so one and a half meters. Now, the reason why they do that is for ship construction purposes. It's a, it's quick math. One and a half is not, not that hard of math, but it is math that has to be done in the middle of a game. So I anytime you have to do math in the middle of a game, it will slow the game down. So I'm either going to have to predetermine, like take the, this is in my personal game, I'm going to have to take their weapon ranges and already divide it by 1.5 to get how many inches it is. We'll figure that out, All right? That's me personally, sorry. Okay, for initiative, the initiative you notice is the, the very first thing. One way to track initiative is, so it's not really talked about here, but wait, what I do is I print out these little two-sided cards right where i got a i got a character's name i got the player's name actually on the top i got the character's name right there i got his upp right there and just some his best skill i put it on there i probably should instead maybe put his combat skills on there but it's not important i'm not using this as his character sheet and then what i do is i make some of these generic cards that just say group six or whatever uh for and this is like a, a tent okay it's two-sided it, it folded in half and what I'll do is I'll put them in order of their initiative. So if he rolled a higher initiative than this guy, then I'll put it in an order like this. And usually, because I have a referee screen, I hang it off of the screen. When it's their time to act, like I go, okay, uh, Urban Icky, it's your turn to act. I will slide his card over 
and he will do his thing. And then I'll go, okay, it's my turn. It's group six. Let me move group six and do whatever they're doing. And then I'll take the next guy and I'll say, okay, it's your turn. And that way I can keep track of initiative. And when all the initiatives are done, I'll slide them all back into their starting position. And then we'll, we'll start the second round by moving them over and over and over. So that's my way of tracking initiative. And it lets the players look up at the referee screen and they can kind of see who's next and what's going on. Just makes it quicker. Okay, that's enough about me and my game. Now we need to talk about what the actual rules are and how they discuss it for you. Okay, so initiative. You have a number of participants in the combat and so you want to put them in a sequence so that you can take turns. Basically you can say, okay, it's your turn, it's your turn, it's your turn, you move on. Now how do you do that? You roll two dice and you either add your dexterity or your intellect. What that's representing is you're just quick on your feet so you get a quick initiative or your mind is smart enough that you you can react to things quicker and so you move you know you you act higher in the initiative chain like if there's just two or three bad guys you can roll initiative for each one of them uh, but if you've got a, a larger group or if you've got multiple types of bad guys like maybe i've got cops and i've got robbers and then the players are stuck in the middle. So I might roll initiative for all the cops as one group, and then all the robbers as one group, and then let the players fit in how they fit. Uh, but if you've just got a handful of bad guys, and I say bad guys, but I mean opponents, then uh, you could roll individually for them if you prefer. Then they talk about, before you even begin, you got ambushes. Uh, a lot of times, one side or the other might get the jump on on a party because imagine your players are um, waiting around the corner until this guy walks around before they jump him right well basically that's an ambush but they give the ambushers a plus six to their initiative and the ambush e a minus six to his initiative so it's it's theoretically possible for the ambush E to actually go first. It's not gonna be very often uh, because that's a 12 point swing. And if he's got a good modifier, he might, and if and if he rolls boxcars and you roll snake eyes, you're, that's still only a 10 point swing. And then, uh, so he's gotta have a really high modifier, maybe a plus three, and you have a plus zero possibly. So then it, it's like, it's super rare that he would be able to go first. But it, but it is theoretically possible. Tactics. As long as you're not surprised, okay, basically you're not ambushed. As long as you're not surprised, one of your players, it says travelers, right? One of your travelers can make a tactics roll. And if he makes a tactics roll, whatever his effect is, and if you remember from our previous video, the effect is how much you beat the target number by. His effect is applied to his team's initiative role. So basically he says, okay, you stand here, you stand here, we'll get him when he comes around the corner. So he's he's got the tactics. He knows where to put people to get the most effect out of them. And based on how high he rolls, that'll add to your initiative. That's big. That's real big, especially if you have two sides that neither one are uh, surprised. You're just like starting a fight. One side has tactics and the other doesn't and he rolls really good, he could get like a plus six to your guys' side initiative. And remember, you're only rolling two dice. So that's 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 huge. Having somebody on your team with tactics is huge. Now, they're talking about maps. Uh, like I was talking about the map of the starship or what have you, uh, and they're saying uses a 1.5 meters per map square or hex, because you can use hexes. Uh, Steve Jackson put out a bunch of, for his GURPS Traveler game, he put out a bunch of starship maps that you could fold out and lay out, and they're double-sided. One side has squares, one side has hexes. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, so right now you've got the initiative. You got the initiative knocked out, you got the map laid out. Now you have a combat round. Combat rounds, like most games, last six seconds. Now I don't know where this six seconds originally came from. Why is around six seconds? I've seen a lot of games where it's six seconds. And I think it's easily divisible by 10 for one minute. I think that's why around is six seconds. But I don't see why it couldn't be 10 seconds or five seconds or whatever, but 
most games say six seconds is one combat round and so does the mongoose traveler now you have what's called actions in a combat round when it's your turn you can perform a major action or they'll call it a significant action and then you can also perform a minor action so like D D uh, would call it like your action and your bonus action or something like that where in traveler it's called a significant action and a minor action what's unique in traveler is you can convert your significant action to two more minor actions right so you could instead of taking a significant action you could take three minor actions, and that's kind of cool because movement is considered a minor action i can move my six meters in in one action one minor action and then i have my significant action to shoot or attack or do some kind of major activity with that takes the majority of your concentration that is a significant action i just moved six meters but if I traded that in for two more or minor actions, I can move two more times if I wanted for a total of three, which is 18 meters, right? Six, six, and six. Or I could do a, a minor action of movement and then two other minor actions, like maybe move one more time and then maybe reload because reload is considered a minor action. So what you need is you need a list of what all the significant actions are and what all the minor actions are and then you'll be able to cruise you'll be on you'll be on autopilot <clears throat> not only do you have your significant and minor actions but you also have what's called a reaction and you can take any number of reactions as you want unlike some other games one guy shoots at you and you want to dodge you react if another guy shoots at you and you want to dodge you can react if a guy throws a grenade and you want to react react you have a number of reactions they're unlimited and you also can take a number of free actions free actions are so minor that they're not even considered actions they're free and you can do as many of them as you want now if you abuse the rule the referee should step in and say wow you just took like 20 free actions we're going to put have to put a hold on that that's up to the referee to decide when to stop you so here are the actions attack this is significant Attack is a significant action, a melee attack or a ranged attack. And then there's the ability to convert your significant action into minor actions, right? That's a significant action converts to three to two minor actions, which gives you a total of three. And then there's something called miscellaneous because they consider attack to be the most popular significant action and the conversion. But there's miscellaneous ones like applying first aid. That would be considered a significant action. Bypass the security system, using a psychic power, issuing orders to your followers, or calling in an orbital strike. Those are all considered miscellaneous. As a referee, you kind of just have to determine if it's a major action or a minor action, and that comes with experience. Okay, some minor actions. Aiming. If you want to aim before you shoot, then that is considered a minor action, and it gives you a plus one. You're allowed to do that three times. So remember, I took my significant action, I converted it to two minor actions, and so I'll have a total of three minor actions. I can aim for each one of those minor actions, giving me a total of plus three on my next shot, which would be my next turn. But if I wanted to, on my following turn, I could aim again for three times, and that would give me another plus three for a total of plus six. And then on my next turn, I wouldn't be able to aim anymore because plus six is the best you can do. Well, I could continue to aim, but it would just be a plus six. Changing your stance is a minor action. When they, when they say that, they mean like stand up, crouch, or lie prone. You know, the three positions in a video game. Now, if you draw a weapon out or reload the weapon, that's considered minor. Movement, six meters, is considered a minor action. And there are some miscellaneous minor actions, like spotting a good sniping position identify equipment of an enemy or picking something off the ground nearby surfaces grabbing some that would be considered drawing and reloading as something picking up off the ground that's miscellaneous but it would be considered a minor action and there are a lot more minor actions that you have to determine and uh, figure out on your own 
free action. A free action is just saying like, hey, open the door, or they can be accomplished so quickly that it doesn't matter. Maybe if you just wanna say something quick to somebody, like uh, the answer is 12, you know, that would be a free action. Okay, extended actions would be actions that take more than one round. Things that take a minute or two or whatever, something like that, that's an extended action. A firefight might interrupt that. So like if you sustain damage while performing an extended action, you have to make a immediate check with the skill you're currently using and the damage is a negative die roll modifier. And that's basically just to, it's like your concentration roll. You're trying to stay focused on what you're trying to do. And failure with an effect of minus six or less will ruin the task completely. And then you gotta start again. So basically if you fail it by six or more, Leadership. Uh, this is an order. If you remember in the significant actions, one of the mis miscellaneous was issue orders. If a leader wants to uh, do, do a leadership action on his team, you make your roll, and then the effect of the check is the number of boons that the traveler can give to his team. Now remember, a boon is throwing an extra die and keeping the top two. Okay, now here are some of the reactions that you could do. And remember, you can do an unlimited number of these. There's dodging, right? So you can dodge to give your opponent a minus, but that'll also give you a minus on your next attack. So you're gonna suffer a minus two, and they'll get a minus equal to your athletics, dexterity, die roll modifier, or just your dex, whichever is higher. So if you don't have a good dex, don't bother dodging, because you're not giving them a minus. Or if you only have a dex plus one, you're only giving them a minus one, and you're taking a minus two. Uh, both melee and ranged attacks can be dodged. Diving for cover. That's different than dodging. It's similar to dodging, but instead, in, you instead of just ducking down, you are going to throw yourself to the ground, going prone, or jumping behind something solid, like uh, a car or a wall. So when you dive for cover, you, get a, you give everyone that shoots at you a minus two on their attack roll to hit you, and you get a bonus to armor based on what you dove behind. So like if you dive behind a civilian vehicle, you get like plus 10, I think, to your armor. And we'll get into armor and what that does for you in a minute. Now, to be able to use this dive for cover option, you have to be within one square of the cover. And if there's no cover, you're basically diving prone, giving everybody a minus one to hit you. But remember, if you dive for cover, you don't get to attack. You don't get to do anything on your next turn. Parry. In close combat, when you're in melee, engaged in like sword attacks or fists or something like that, uh, you can use your reaction to parry and that'll inflict a negative die roll modifier based on your melee skill. So if you're skilled at blades, you can give them a minus equal to your skill. And there's no penalty to do that. It's implied that you're always doing that. Okay, melee attack. And this says, if you're within two meters of an enemy, where did this two meters come from? Why isn't it 1.5? But if you're within two meters of an enemy and you are locked in close combat, it's considered very short range. And when you're that close, you, you and your opponent cannot attack anyone else. So I, just because you're, if you're standing next to me, I can't go over there and shoot him. I have to fight you. And only single-handed ranged weapons, such as pistols, can make an attack against someone that's in close combat. And a pistol can be parried. Weird. Like you knock it out of the side and it shoots over this way. If you try to move while locked into close combat, your opponent can make an immediate free attack with a plus two on his attack roll. Basically, it's a it's a um, attack of opportunity. You know, as you leave his square, weapons have a long. They have their own stats. They have a stat sheet, uh, and the ones they're showing here is a dagger and a rifle, and that's pretty. Those are pretty good. Now you're going to get the tech level, like when that weapon is introduced into technology. Uh, you're also going to get the range, uh, range of melee or range of 500 meters. Uh, when, when it talks about range, you don't just shoot 500 meters you have a short range, which is a quarter of the weapon's range. When, when, when we write range down, we shouldn't just write 500. That's not, that's, 
It doesn't help because you got to write everything down to speed up combat, in my opinion. You should write down the different ranges, short, long, and extreme, right, and medium. That's just the medium range. So you should have short, which is one quarter of that, and then you have long, which is twice that, and then you have extreme, which is four times that. And note that anything over 100 meters is considered extreme unless you have a scope. And that would be under the traits or it would be an, uh, something you bought to add onto your weapon. So you should write down, so it would be 125, 500, 1000, 2000. So I could make a shot out at 2000 meters, but it would be considered extreme range. Uh, I could make a shot anything over 100 is considered extreme because this weapon doesn't have a scope. Okay, so that's what I think you should write down. And then, and then from there, in my opinion, I think I should divide it by 1.5 just to know how many inches it is, just to make it easy. So that 125 meters divided by 1.5 equals whatever that number is, and it'll tell you. And those are the numbers you should write down in inches because it just makes it easier for you as a player and me as a game master to just count inches instead of worrying about meters. Okay, now the damage. That's how many dice you roll and whatever the modifiers are. Like the dagger does a D6 plus 2 and the rifle does a D3 dice. And remember, you can affect damage, and I'll explain that in a little bit. And then it's got kilograms, how much it weighs, how much it costs in credits. And then magazine tells me how many bullets are in your magazine and then the magazine cost. So if you paid 10 credits, you get a magazine with 20 rounds in it. And then traits. Some, some weapons have traits like 0G or Sniper or Bulky. Those will be explained when we go over all the equipment. When you roll to hit, and let's say the target number is 8, right, which it's always 8, and then you beat your target number by 10, Let's say you just rolled incredibly good and you got a high modifiers and stuff. You, you beat it by 10. Well, that's going to add an extra 10 to the damage. Anything you beat the roll by is how much extra damage you do. Now, when you hit someone with any weapon, a dagger, a sword, a battle axe, a submachine gun, a rifle, it doesn't matter. When you hit somebody, you roll damage and then that damage is applied to their endurance. And then once their endurance is reduced to zero, then any excessive damage is deducted from the target's strength or dex, not both. So it comes off of the strength or dex. You're the target, you get to decide if it comes off your strength or dexterity. If it comes off your dexterity, that's gonna modify your dex mods for, for, for future shooting. But if it comes off your strength, it's gonna modify you know your physical strength. When two stats are reduced to zero, you become unconscious. And then any further damage is reduced from the last. So if you took it off of strength and it's reduced to zero, you fall unconscious, but any additional damage would now go off of dexterity. And if all three stats are reduced to zero, you have been killed. Now with melee attacks, uh, you do get to add your strength modifier as a damage modifier. Let's take a step back, two steps back. Okay, we're on page 71. It says melee attack, ranged attack. Uh, when you do a melee attack, you don't always use your strength modifier. You can use your strength or your dex modifier to hit. That's up to the player to decide. Does he want to be an agile fighter or does he want to be a brute? You know. And then in ranged combat, you have to use dex. That's your ability to aim. Okay, we're back to armor on page 74. Okay, armor. Everything you wear in the future has an armor value, pretty much. Armor reduces the amount of damage done to you. So if I have cloth armor which has eight armor you shoot me and you do seven points of damage well i take zero damage because my armor absorbed it all special situation is if you roll with an effect of six or better that's going to consider a critical hit and a critical hit will always do at least one point of damage no matter what your armor is so if you're wearing some kind of crazy battle dress with 20 points of armor and i'm attacking you with a dagger and um, there's no way I'm ever going to do enough damage. But if I roll an effect of six or better, you're going to take a point of damage. Okay, now there's something called cover. Cover is more important when you're in a shooting scenario like bullets and lasers. You want to take cover behind something solid because if you're behind cover, people get a minus two to hit you uh, as per the diving to cover rule. But you don't have to dive this time. You can just be in cover. If you're in cover, you also get additional armor based on what the cover is. And here's a little chart that shows you 
Like if you're behind a tree trunk, you get plus six. But if you're behind like an armored vehicle, you get plus 15. Now there's something called hiding. If you can position yourself completely out of sight, nobody can shoot at you. Nobody, you can't make attacks and people can't make attacks against you. So like imagine there's a giant wall and you're in the middle of it. You're not on the edge shooting around. You're in the middle of the wall. Well, nobody can shoot you. You can't shoot them. But if he's aware of your presence, like maybe he's got x-ray vision and he's on the other side of the wall, he can still shoot through the wall or try to to hit you because his you're not hidden to him because of his ability to see you and he can even make attacks at you. He'll get the minus two and you'll get the cover bonus. If there's multiple types of cover, let's say this example is a car in the forest. Let's say there's a rock and a tree or there's a car behind a rock. Either way, you're only going to get the best cover. You, you take the best one and that's what you get. You don't get all of them added together. Okay, now there is a there is a trait and we're getting ready to go into the weapon traits, but one of them is destructive weapons. So it'll have two D's, so the double D. It'll, it'll be listed like three DD. And in that case, it's destructive and he's gonna roll three dice for damage. But a destructive weapon multiplies the total rolled by 10. So it's kind of like 30 dice in a way because that weapon is just devastating. It's just super destructive. And then inevitably there's a, a player that wants to run up to a guy and grab him. Maybe you're trying to kidnap somebody. Maybe you're trying to uh, keep somebody from fleeing or you're trying to interrogate somebody, but inevitably something's gonna happen where a player wants to grab someone else. That's called grappling. You basically make, you both make an opposed unarmed roll. So I roll with my unarmed skill, you roll with your unarmed skill. The winner can choose one of the following. And here's the list right here on 75. Force you prone, so he can knock you down. He can disarm you, take your weapon. If his effective six is six or more, throw you a D6 meters. So think of like uh, jujitsu or something like that where he takes you and he flips you over and he throws you, causing a D6 damage. This automatically ends the grapple, of course, because you're that far away. He can just inflict damage, just grab you, break your arm or whatever. He can use his pistol or small blade, uh, using his pistol or small blade, he can just attack you. Or he can escape and move away. So if he wins and he's the one getting chased, he can say, nope, gets a free six meter move. Drag your opponent three meters. So you can grab him and you can pull him or you can just continue to hold on to him. And while involved in a grapple, you may do nothing except opposed melee unarmed checks. Okay, dual weapons. You've seen those guys with two pistols or two swords. So he can attack with both in the same combat round. However, he cannot aim with either and he suffers a minus two on his attack rolls for both. It doesn't apply if you have two weapons, but you're only shooting one of them. Like maybe a pistol and a sword, right? And you're shooting, pew, 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 pew. right? So you, don't, you wouldn't get a minus that way. Okay, here are the weapon traits. APX, that means you ignore that many points of armor. So if you've got AP5 and I've got an armor of eight, I technically only can stop three points of that damage. Auto X. Okay, auto is a little bit different. The X is the variable, and on the weapons, that X is actually a number. So let's say it's auto 3. Well, if it's auto 3, I can do a single burst, or I, I can take a single shot, pow, like a normal significant action, or I can have it on burst fire, so I can add auto score to the damage, so I like fire a three round burst, because remember it's auto 3, and that would add three to the damage, or I can do full auto. Now, full auto uses three times the auto score. So it would use nine bullets and it would allow me to make a number of attacks equal to my auto score. So I could roll three attacks. The limiter is they all have to be within six meters of each other. And if you use auto, you cannot use the scope or aim. So auto is a little bit, yeah. Then there's blast. Uh, it's basically like a grenade or a weapon that has a blast radius missile or something. The blast X is how big in radius the meters of the blast radius is. Bulky has a powerful recoil or is extremely heavy and it makes it difficult to use. You have to have a strength of nine or higher to use it without a penalty. The penalty is the difference between your strength modifier and plus one. You get a plus one at strength nine. So if you don't have a strength nine, 
your strength zero, the difference is one, that would be the penalty. Radiation, some weapons cause radiation. Scope, basically it allows you to shoot past that 100 meters without it being extreme. Smart, basically means your gun fires smart bullets or bullets, not, not they're not turning in midair, but they'll like burst once they get past the window. It also might have some night vision enhancements. Okay, you gain a DM for your attack roll equal to the difference between your tech levels. So if he's a tech five soldier and you're a tech 10 soldier, you'll get a plus five up to a maximum of plus six. And you get a minimum of at least plus one. So smart will always give you at least a plus one. Stun, a weapon that stuns attacks the endurance just like normal, but if the endurance is reduced to zero, they're unconscious. Any excessive damage is counted as how many rounds they're unconscious. Very bulky is strength 12 plus two. And same thing, you get a, the difference between plus two and whatever your stat is. Zero G, you can fire it in zero G without having to make an athletics dexterity check. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and recap combat real quick. Combat starts with opposing forces. You have to roll initiative. Uh, you roll two dice and you add either your intelligence or your dexterity modifier. Uh, if you have someone on your team that has tactics and your team was not surprised, you get to roll and the effect on the tactics roll is added to everyone's initiative on your side. Maps are broken down into squares or inches and they represent one and a half meters. Uh, the combat round is six seconds. You can do a significant action and a minor action or you can convert your significant action into two additional minor actions for a total of three minor actions. You can perform reactions and free actions at will. Some significant actions are attack, either melee or ranged, or hand-to-hand. -hand. And then you have, you can convert your major to two minors. You have miscellaneous actions like first aid or psychic powers or things like that. And then minor actions are things like aiming, which you could do up to six times in a row, uh, changing your stance, like prone, crouching, or uh, standing. You could draw a weapon, you could pick a weapon up off the ground, and you can reload. Those are all different minor actions. You could move up to six meters. That's minor. You have uh, miscellaneous actions, like just spotting things, noting things. Free actions, I would consider just spotting something as a free action. But um, And then there's extended actions. If you're doing something that takes more than one round and uh, it, you'll have to sit there and do it each round and then if you take damage while you're doing it you need to take a skill check with a minus equal to the effect of the damage uh, as a leader if you if you have a, someone on your team that is the leader or he has a good leadership skill he can direct the battle by making a leadership skill that his effect is how many boons he gets to give to his uh, give to his team. Uh, some reactions are dodging. Uh, you give them a minus equal to your dex modifier and you personally take a minus two. Diving for cover is uh, you give everyone that shoots at you a minus two if you make it behind cover. Uh, if not, if you only go prone, then you give them a minus one. But uh, to be able to get behind the cover, you have to be within 1.5 meters of that cover. And also, it gives you cover added to your armor. You can parry. If you're in melee and they use a pistol, you can still parry it. Uh, melee attacks are things like swords, axes, maces, fists, or uh, even um, grappling. Weapons have a range. The range has four ranges. you got short medium, long, and extreme, uh, and then you have modifiers for each of those ranges. Uh, it's either a plus one, plus zero, minus two, or minus four. Everything is extreme range over 100 meters unless you have a scope. Uh, weapons have, tr okay, damage. The amount that you beat your attack roll by is added to your damage value. When using melee weapons, you can add your strength modifier to your damage. Armor is a damage reducer, so if you have an eight armor, it takes eight off of the damage you take. Uh, if you're in cover, it does the same thing. It gives you armor. Destructive weapons are uh, weapons that have 
an extra D, so it's like 3DD, and that actually does 10 times the roll, whatever you roll on the dice. Uh, then there's uh, grappling. You can do a variety of different things when you grapple someone, not just hold them. You can throw them, you can drag them, you can do damage to them. There's a lot of different things. You can throw them prone. Uh, dual weapons, you get a minus two on both weapons if you use them simultaneously. Uh, weapon traits, you got AP, they subtract from your opponent's armor. Uh, auto allows you to fire at multiple targets or add your auto damage to, uh, auto number to your damage. Uh, blast is how many meters of area that it covers. Bulky uh, is a minus if your strength is below nine and radiation causes rads which is a totally different subject and then scope allows you to shoot past 100 meters and not be considered extreme range uh, smart allows you to use your tech level difference as a plus um, at a minimum of one a maximum of six stun if they reduce the endurance to zero then they're unconscious uh, very bulky is uh, strength 12 uh, to get your, without getting minuses. And then zero G means you don't have to make an athletics check if you fire it in zero G. Now back to taking damage. Uh, remember that you have three physical characteristics. You got strength, dexterity, and endurance. Whenever you take damage, you take it off of endurance first. If it's reduced to zero, no big deal. Then your next or whatever's remaining, or any future damage you take, have to come has to come off either strength or dexterity. It can't come off of both. Now, this is something you might find interesting. If let's say you take a shot and it reduces your endurance to zero, but that's it; it equals your endurance. Or if you take one extra point, you take it off of dexterity, right? The next time someone shoots you, it doesn't have to come off of dexterity. It can now come off of strength. It's that single attack has to go off of one or the other. It can't be both. Unless it's reduced to zero, then the, the remainder comes off of the third part. Uh, if you lose two stats reduced to zero, you're unconscious. If all three stats are reduced to zero, you're considered killed. All right. Now, I was thinking about talking about encounters and dangers in this video because it seems like it's going to be pretty short. It talks about diseases, poisons, radiation, natural healing, medical treatment, and also animals. But I think I'm going to reserve that for the next video. All right, guys. I'll see you in that video.